All good? Well, good afternoon. We are going to go ahead and get started. We're so thrilled you're all here. I'm Cheryl Myers, the Oregon Deputy Secretary of State. I want to thank uh, you for joining us, those of you that are in person, but also to welcome all the classrooms, families, and friends who are tuning in remotely across the state. And much appreciation to the Secretary of the Senate and their team for allowing us to host this historic inauguration in the Senate chamber. It's where lots of good stuff happens and where many of us witnessed Governor Kotex swearing in. So I'd like to invite the amazing 2023 kid governor, Leah Andrus, to the podium to lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance. Leah? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, for liberty and justice for all. Thank you, Leah. And thank you for your remarkable service. Leah spent the past year working on ending bullying through kindness. And we'll hear a little bit more from her shortly. We're so thrilled for everyone who is celebrating the Oregon's, Oregon's incoming 2024 Oregon Kid Governor, Zoya Shaw. Please join me in welcoming her with a round of applause. And wow, did we have a ton of incredible candidates uh, participate this year from across the state. I hope you are all so very proud of your courage and leadership. I know we are. Oregon Kid Governor participation has grown from just a few years ago, only 40 classrooms, to now nearly 100, from Seaside to Tiger to Pleasant Hill, Sherwood to the Dalles, Klamath Falls to, and Eugene and beyond. And we're hoping for even more next year. I'm so relieved I wasn't a judge, though. After viewing all those videos, I thought, oh my goodness, how did they pick? They were all really, really great. And what an amazing cabinet Zoya will have, and they'll share each of their initiatives in just a bit as well. We have Bassam, Kavya, Lydia, Phoebe, Remy, and Sharia. If you haven't had a chance to look at those videos, you have my strong encouragement to do so and you will also see why these young leaders make me hopeful about our future. The cabinet members will continue to work on their individual plans and issues while assisting Zoya with her platform. They're really a remarkable group of emerging leaders from across Oregon, and I am absolutely blown away by their initiatives and their passion that they've each demonstrated throughout this process. Governor-elect Zoya, how does that sound? Pretty fun, huh? I'm excited for you and for us as you begin your term as Oregon's 2024 Kid Governor. My team has already shared how amazing you are and how much they've enjoyed getting to know you. I remember when we had a chance to first meet at your school in that library where so many of the students were like, uh, are we in trouble? <laughs> because it was a surprise announcement. And the support and encouragement and love in that room was absolutely contagious. And your message of creating mental health awareness in youth is so important, and it very much resonated with me. It clearly resonated with students across the state based on how they voted. Another thing I love about the Kid Governor program is it's all about showing up, listening, and asking and then taking action through civic participation and education. The Kid Governor Program lays the foundation for students to be engaged in their community, in their government, and in the wider world. It begins with educators in the classroom, and I know we have some with us today, engaging their students and helping them see that they can make a difference, an impact, a change, just like many of my teachers did for me and my children. Students who participate in Kid Governor learn how Oregon's government works. 
courageous student candidates that I'm looking at, and more, identify issues that matter the most to them. They build a platform around this issue, and then they create a three-point plan, a campaign, and then they film a campaign video. Our hope is that this program will continue to instill lifetime learning, leaders, and future voters here in Oregon. Kid governor candidates step up just like adult candidates, and there are some of those in the room as well today, because they care about Oregon. They care about what happens in their communities and what happens statewide. The student election allows fifth graders to participate in the elections process, and we're proud to be a part of a national network where students from other states are also working on their issues to affect positive change. So it's so wonderful to have all of, all of these great supporters here um, and that we uh, want to have a moment to recognize the outgoing 2023 Oregon Kid Governor, Leah Andrus. She began her tenure a little bit on the shy side, but I think that that's, she's over that. She's really grown in her time as Kid Governor to be a confident leader and she's demonstrated such a spirit of kindness, compassion, generosity, and understanding for others. We're so impressed by your willingness to make a difference in your community and in the spirit of helping others. Thank you, Leah, for all you've done, but I'm sure this is just the beginning for you. I hope you'll still answer my calls when you're the real governor of Oregon. I'm really thrilled that Zoya and her cabinet members are taking their first steps into civics education. And not just education, but action, because those are foundational to building better communities. Again, thank you all for being here to support Zoya, her cabinet, and student, other student Oregonians who will benefit from increased mental health awareness. And for those of you, this is the first time visiting our beautiful state capital. Welcome albeit it's under construction, and this room was just opened yesterday. We're really happy that it happened, but it will be a much safer place for all once the construction is completed. This is your capital. All of you, this is your capital, and your voice has an impact on the decisions that are made in this building, whether it's about plastic pollution, finding friendship, protecting endangered species, discrimination, preventing racism, or elevating mental health awareness in kids. I hope the year ahead is a building block for each of you to learn, to grow, and to create meaningful change. The Oregon Kid Governor Program is a wonderful catalyst to make an impact in your community, and I'm so proud of each and every one of you. I hope the educators, parents, guardians, grandparents, family, and friends take a moment to celebrate these incredible efforts to raise these inspiring young leaders. It does take a village at times, and each of you have played an important role to help these students find their voice. I also want to recognize a few leaders that are here today. Bureau of Labor and Industry Commissioner Christina Stevenson, <laughs> Majority Leader Julie Fahey, <laughs> and Speaker-elect. Um, and then also our state treasurer, Tobias Reed. <laughs> These leaders are big supporters of civic engagement, and they're here to cheer you on as you're sworn into office. We're thankful to have them join us, and if you get an opportunity after the ceremony, please meet your state leaders. Now, let's get on with the official part of our time, the swearing in. Please help me welcome outgoing Kid Governor Leah Andrus to share her farewell address. Good morning. My name is Leah Andrus, and it's my privilege, privilege to speak to you all for the last time as the 2023 Oregon Kid Governor. I can't believe I'm giving my farewell speech today. It feels like just yesterday I was giving my inauguration speech. This year has taught me so much. It has helped me grow, be more confident, and become a better person. 
I would, I would like to start by congratulating Zulia. I'm so proud of you and your platform for creating mental health awareness in kids and kids. It is so important that many children and youth it is so important. So many children and youth throughout the world struggle with this, and it's important that we are aware to remove stig stigma, that we can identify struggles, and that we provide the right tools in our schools. Zoya, you may feel overwhelmed right now and nervous, but don't worry. I, fe I had those same feelings. You, you have an amazing support system. As I stand before you today, I can say that this experience was life-changing. I got to meet so many wonderful people along the way that, did, that also wanted to make a difference in the world, just like me. I got to meet the, our former kid governor, Kate Brown, our current, kid, our current governor, Tina Kotek. I got to meet, I got to go meet the Senate floor and be honored by my state, Senator Woods. I got to meet the state representative, Neron. I, Got a chance to meet the Sherrod Mayor, Tim Rosenier, and I also got to meet with the Deputy Secretary Myers, Senator Merkley, and so many others. I won the 2023 election on the platform of anti-bullying through kindness. I couldn't believe that somebody like me could win. To be honest, I don't consider myself the smartest in the room. I'm super sporty, shy, and to be honest, I don't have the best grades but I knew that bullying in our schools had to stop. And the only way that I could make a change was by doing something about it. That's why I ran for Oregon Kid Governor when I was younger. When I was younger, I was, I was hurt, bullied, and I don't want anyone else to feel the same way that I did. I saw bullying in schools, in sporting games, and in so many other places, a change had to happen. To be honest, Bullying is still happening all over the world today, and I wish I could have stopped it all, but I can confidently, confidently say, although I didn't fully stop bullying, I planted a seed. A seed of hope. I planted a small seed in my community and others around mine. So many more schools are doing toodles, and they, they're having students be kindness helpers and are doing daily access service. This is a seed of hope. I am so grateful for the experience and opportunities I was given this year, but I could never have done this alone. First, I would like to give a huge thank you to Nikki, our, our kid governor's uh, state coordinator. Thank you, Nikki, for your support and compassion and all that you have given me this year. I couldn't have done this without you. Thank you. Secondly, I want to thank my cabinet members. Thank you for partnering with me while also working on accomplishing your own platform. Thank you to the students of Hawksville Elementary for believing in me and trusting that a change could happen. I would also like to thank Mr. Gregory and Ms. Conrad for supporting me and giving me that guidance during my term. Also, thank you to the Stewart Elementary Schools for having me in their schools to talk about bullying. Lastly, I would like to thank my family. Thank you to my parents for encouraging me, supporting me, and loving me. Thank you to my siblings for supporting me and reminding me to always be kind even when we disagree on things because that's my platform. Lastly, thank you to my friends and, and my community for your endless support. I would like to end by congratulating Zoya again. You are truly an inspiration. Although we are kids and haven't experienced as much as adults have, we are still able to make a change. We can plant a seed in people's lives and create opportunities to better this world. Don't let anybody tell you otherwise. We, we are the hope for change. Let's inspire others to the same. Thank you. Wow. Let me just say that this apparently unassuming, quiet person, there is just such an amazing leader inside. And I, I think that that's probably true in so many of, of our candidates who maybe didn't think that this was something that they had thought about doing. But how wonderful that this program allows 
students to be able to explore some new arenas and find out some things about themselves, which I'm sure, Leah, you like, like maybe were nervous before meeting Senator Merkley and then at, after you spoke with him, you lived. You, were <laughs> you didn't just perish. And um, you know, all of that creates more and more confidence, and that is really such a crucial part I know, you know, having run for office and others in the room, I'm sure, would also speak to that. It's a nerve-wracking time, and you wonder, why did I do this? Why did I say I'd do this? Oh, that's right, because I want to make a really good difference in our world. And so, again, we're just so proud of you, Leah. What a great job. So let's give her one more applause. So we know this is not the end of your leadership journey, Leah, and I expect to be seeing and hearing from you or your family about all the great things that you're up to. So would the Honorable Retired Chief Justice of the Oregon Supreme Court, Paul DeMunoz, please join me. We're all grateful for your long-standing service. Are you, you want to do it there? Sure. Um, he is, he is, this is not his first kid governor rodeo. He has been back time and time again, and we are so grateful for your longstanding public service and your dedication and commitment to this program. Chief Justice. Thank you. Well, the Deputy Secretary of State said I could make just a couple of remarks before I administer the oath of office to the cabinet members. And so I'd like to say that I want to thank Dennis Richardson, the uh, former Secretary of State, the late Dennis Richardson, for inaugurating this program and giving me the opportunity to be a part of it, the very first opportunity. I also want to thank all of his successor Secretary of States who have, in my opinion, broadened the program. Um, it seems that there are more classrooms participating each year that we have this, and I guess this year there was over 100 classrooms part participating in this. I also want to thank uh, all the students throughout the, the state, their teachers, um, their parents, uh, all of them for participating in what I consider to be one of our premier civic education programs. Uh, I'm going to repeat something I've said over the years when I've been here. Our appreciation of our democratic way of life and our government is not passed down in our DNA. It has to be nurtured, educated and understood with each generation. And having this, this kind of program is one aspect of that. I also want to say that um, in addition to the civic government aspect of this, I think there are additional benefits to all of our students. In putting together their programs, they have to think clearly, they have to think critically, they have to express themselves in writing. They have to express themselves logically and persuasively, both in writing and orally. And so I think there are wonderful benefits that go along with education that perhaps you don't get every day in the classroom. And so I want to congratulate all of you for participating in this. I congratulate our new governor. I also want to thank our former governor. You're a hard act to follow. So. Thank you for your wonderful talk. So I would like to invite now the cabinet members to come up and I will administer their oath of office. Don't hesitate. <laughs> so I'm gonna, I think the best way to do this is for you all to stand here so that the camera can get, why don't you all line up across there, okay. Mr. Photographer, can you get them all in here? Okay, so I'm going to administer your oath of office. It's a, it's a good, simple one in that you don't have to say anything until the end. And that's when you say, I do, okay? All right, here we go. I want you to raise your right hand, and, I, and I'll administer the oath to you now. Do you solemnly swear or affirm that you will support the fifth graders and students of Oregon during your one-year term and so long as you continue as a citizen thereof? 
and that you will faithfully discharge the duties of the Office of Kid Governor's Cabinet to the best of your abilities, so help you God. If you will, please say, I do. I do. All right, now I'm going to invite you to go up to the dais. Okay, that's up at the top, and I'll join you if I don't trip over that. Hello, my name is Remy. Okay, where are you from? Um, I am from Beaverton. Um, what school do you go to? And I go to Indian Hills Elementary. Okay, and what was your three-point plan? Uh, my three-point, my three-point plan to stop discrimination um, was. Um, oh, wait. Let me think real quick. Hi, my name is Kavya Kaufman, and I live in Eugene, Oregon, and I go to Adams Elementary. My three-point plan for stopping plastic pollution was ACT, Awareness, Commitment, Take Action. Hi, my name is Lydia LaDuceur. I'm from Dry Hollow Elementary School in the Dalles. Um, my platform was to conserve and protect Oregon's resources. Um, point one was to start a cleanup club with our Dry Hollow Student Council. Point two was to organize a poster contest to get people aware. And point three was to make people aware to conserve our water. Hello, my name is Phoebe Clyde, and I'm from Pacific Ridge Elementary, Seaside, Oregon. My three-point plan was to first encourage teachers to take their students on more nature hikes to observe the wildlife around us. Knowledge is power. Second, to form a Save the Bees, Save Our Food Sources Committee. And finally, third, to organize a fundraiser and donate the donate the the money raised to the Oregon Bee Project. Hi, I'm Basim Fayed. I'm from Portland. I go to Bonnie Slope Elementary School. My platform was to increase friendship in schools. My first way to solve that is putting buddy benches, which are basically like at recess, if you don't have a friend, you can go sit there so people can know that you want a friend. Also, um, friendship clubs, which are like basically a place where all fifth graders or all people like in elementary school can go to and just talk with other people and hopefully make more friends. Also, the independent recess area, which is a place at recess, which has like a bunch of things that you can like use, like drawing tools, art supplies. And then, so like, if you don't have anyone to play with at recess, you can just like hang out there and someone can see you and ask you to play with them there. My name is Shaudia Naradi and I'm from Eugene. 
I go to Buena Vista Spanish Immersion Elementary School, and my platform was preventing racism. Music can affect everybody. My three-point plan was to educate people about how to reply, reply to racist comments the, and to raise awareness about racism among young kids and to have good citizenship and encourage kindness, compassion, and empathy towards others. So I'm going to present each one of you with a certificate, and I think the best way to do this is when I call your name, you walk right across here, I'll hand you your certificate. I congratulate you. But let's give them another hand for their <laughs> great win. Pass them. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. Katya. Congratulations. Thank you. I can give you a <laughs> Thank you. Lydia. Congratulations. Thank you so much. Phoebe. Remy. Good job, Remy. You were the first one. <laughs> and Chow Ra. Congratulations. You did a great job. Okay, follow me down. All right. I'll let the teacher up here. So it's now my privilege to administer the oath of office to our newly elected kid governor. Zoe, will you come up? <laughs> Raise your right hand. And you don't have to repeat after me. You just have to say, I do, at the end. All right? Do you solemnly swear or affirm that you will support the fifth graders and students of Oregon during your one year term and so long as you continue as a citizen thereof and that you will faithfully discharge the duties of the office of kid governor to the best of your abilities so help you God. Congratulations. And, and I'll present your certificate to you right here. Congratulations. Thank you. Zoya, would you join me up at the dais, please? Or, excuse me, Governor Zoya. <laughs> Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Zoya Shah, and I am the Oregon Kid Governor-elect for 2024. I am immensely grateful to be here today, but I would not have been here without the help, support, and encouragement from a long list of people. So I want to take this opportunity to thank them all today. First and foremost, I want to thank the Oregon Secretary of State's office for creating this program, which gives fifth graders like me and my cabinet members an opportunity to help others and create a change. I would like to thank all the voters across Oregon who voted in this election and put their faith in me as their next kid governor. I would like to thank my teacher, Mr. Petoskey, and principal, Dr. Marsh, who always encouraged and supported me. I want to thank my school friends for sacrificing recess time and sitting with me while I read and reread my speeches to them and giving me critical feedback. A big shout out to all my friends and family who traveled all the way to Salem today, missing work and school to cheer and support me. I want to thank Nikki Fisher for her invaluable guidance and help navigating different events since I got elected. 
I want to thank my little brother, Ayan, for always being on his best behavior and being cooperative and for patiently sitting through my various events and understand, despite not really understanding. I love you, Ayan. And last, but definitely not the least, I want to thank my mom and dad for spending endless hours editing and revising my speeches, filming my campaign video, for always being the voice of encouragement and just being there for me. I also want to congratulate my amazing cabinet members, Basim, Kavya, Lydia, Phoebe, Remy, and Shorya, who themselves have amazing platforms. I look forward to working with you on our platforms and creating a change along the way. As you all know, my platform is about creating mental health awareness in kids. To accomplish this, I came up with my three-point plan, CIA. Create awareness, identify the trigger, and then act and provide support. When my anxiety started a few years ago, I didn't know what was happening to me, but my parents helped me identify it, and then I knew that what I was feeling had a name, and just like me, a lot of other kids may not be aware too. So I feel it is important to create awareness because there are still people out there who think it's ridiculous that a kid could have anxiety or depression, and some people also feel embarrassed to talk about their feelings. The only way to solve a problem is to first acknowledge that we have one. So we need to talk more about mental health in, to normalize it and remove the stigma around it. And we need to stop undermining kids' feelings and treat them as important. Let kids know that their feelings are valid too. And finally, act and provide support. My first action is going to be to start my club. Club Mighty Minds is where everyone is welcome to share their feelings or fears. This way we know that we are not alone and there are others in the same boat too. A few minutes of frame break after every class will also help kids get their wiggles out so they can focus better on the next one. Different kids may need different support, but I'm sure there's a lot more we can do. Though, as a kid, I may not have all the answers, but I'm willing to learn. So I turn to all of you today to seek your help and guidance throughout my term so we can best help the kids of Oregon. Will you collaborate with me so that together we can create a meaningful change? Thank you. Thank you. Oh my gosh. Thank you so much, Kid Governor Shaw. Congratulations again. I know that I, I feel incredibly certain that you and your cabinet will have an amazing year ahead. And I can really see why so many of your platforms dovetail and can connect with each other. And so as you all work toward that moving forward, um, it's just going to be delightful to watch the progress. I'd like to extend a heartfelt gratitude to the educators, the parents, the guardians, family, friends, community members, and cabinet members, outgoing Governor Leah, the Honorable Retired Chief Justice de Munez, the legislative media, the Secretary of the Senate and their incredible team, and our SOS team, especially Nikki Fisher, please wave who has coordinated so much of this, Emma and Griffith on our team, Kiera, who's been taking photos and will take some again, and look, a surprise visit from the Senate President Wagner. Thank you for joining us. And thank you for having the Senate floor opened yesterday so that we could be here. And I see his Chief of Staff, Barry Pack. Welcome. So I'm certain we're all incredibly inspired by these young leaders. They've just, it's just been a highlight. And I think that they also encourage us to do all that we can to improve our own communities as adults. So thank you again to all for joining us. And um, this concludes the inauguration. We have elected leader, uh, we have elected leaders, kid governor, we have two kid governors here. We have elected adult leaders here. And um, I know that some families and friends would like to get some photos. Kiera is happy to, to shoot some of those with you. So please, um, please, one more time, congratulations for Oregon Kid Governor 2024. Thank you.